Hey! Before we start this video, I have a really cool announcement to make. Uh, but if you don't care, I'll leave a chapter in this video so you can skip the whole thing. After a long time thinking about it, doing some research and comparisons, designing something that I thought would be cool enough for you to look as good as you can. I opened a store in Motif with some blue tag designs for shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts and other stuff. We have minimalist stuff, outlines, fan art and other designs that will make her mom call me after she sees you with the school last shirt. Who knows, I might become your new dad. I really hope you find something you like. And if you do end up getting one of these, please let me know how you feel about them. I'll keep working on some new designs and how I can improve on it, so keep an eye out for that. I'll definitely let you know when I have some more on the store. But now, back to the video. As always, I didn't plan on what we should do this week, so I decided to ask you guys on a live stream. It was a fight between Black, Def Jam and Rampage. And as you can see by the title of the video, Black ended up being the winner. I already had some expectations for this game. I used to play this one a lot as a kid and apparently so did every Brazilian I've ever met in my life. I know this game wasn't the most popular in other places, so it's always weird to me that we all grow up loving the same games in South America. Even if I never talked to that many people from different countries around there. You can go there and ask anyone and they always say that Black was the best looking PS2 game ever made. But this week we are gonna go back to that game and see how well it holds up and... Wait, it was made by Criterion? Criterion, who made Burnout and now makes the Need for Speed series? Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Black is the one and only first person shooter Criterion ever made. And the only game that wasn't a racing one after they started working in Burnout. You'd think that they would be the last team EA would ask to make an FPS and let me remind you, it was the last one they made too. And with that in mind, let's talk about Black. We start with a very long cutscene of Sergeant Jay Keller entering a room while handcuffed and a guy starts giving his information and how apparently he did something really bad but is willing to release him from prison if he helps him. He asks about something called the Seventh Wave, a terrorist organization that's responsible for numerous terrorist attacks. We then get into the game as Keller fighting the Seventh Wave in the streets of a city in Russia. First things first. Let's talk about the graphics in this game. It is still amazing to me how great this game looks. Remember, this is a PS2 game, and some places in this game are just so beautiful that it could be mistaken by an early PS3 one. Textures still look very good, especially in guns. Models are sharp, reflective, the animations are so, so good. If I were to nitpick, the best I could say is that they might be a little bit too fast and I would love to be able to see it slower, so you could really appreciate the work they did with it. The devs even put a depth of field effect every time you reload so you can be 100% focused on the gun animation. They knew how good they looked and really wanted to show it off. You can however tell how they did some of the tricks now, like not being actually a depth of field effect, but actually just blurring the background and not the gun to give that effect. Meaning that even if you get your gun right next to something it will still be blurred, even though it shouldn't because it's in the same place as your gun. Not that it's that noticeable, but I thought it would be cool to mention for the sake of transparency. I don't want anyone going out there and saying, oh, this was the first game to have depth of field I saw on Blue Tag's channel. The levels are very open and long in this game, and everywhere you look there's a lot of details put into it. One of my favorites for example was the second level where it takes place in the woods. Seeing the moonlight go through the trees while you go through the levels with the foliage falling from them, just everything in this game looks so good and you can't help but drool over it. Whenever you shoot something you also see particles and dirt in the air, and it makes so you actually feel like you're shooting a powerful gun not a nerf. And the gritty tone in this whole game also helps achieve that effect. The entire game makes you feel like you're going through some critical and extremely serious stuff. It's crazy how a simple change of color tone can completely change how a game makes you feel. I should also mention that there's a lot of destruction in this game, which I did remember it had, but there's a lot of parts in this game that they almost make a focus for you to destroy whatever you can in your way. Explosive crates, gas tanks, cars, Everywhere you look, there's something for you to explode. You don't like using doors? The devs understood that. Who the hell has the time to go through doors these days? Just get your shotgun and blast straight through them. Oh, uh, you're still considering using a door? Just bring it out again and go through the wall then. 
When they are not the focus, you still have a lot of distraction in places you didn't even expect to see it. You might be in the middle of a firefight, not even paying attention to what you can or can't break, but it's still there, even though you're not looking. Let me talk about something that most of you don't really care about, but it was something I was super impressed by this game. The audio. Most of us in the PS2 era didn't use headphones and just played on a small CRT TV. And a lot of times when I play older games like these, I notice a lot of imperfections with the audio. Probably because the devs didn't expect you to be using an expensive headset to play a PS2 game. That's not the case in Black. The audio in this game is so good it even puts games made today to shame. I never expected a console game this old to sound this good and I highly advise you to play with headphones at least once in your life. There's a level in this game where you have to move through a cemetery hiding behind gravestones while a sniper is trying to hit you. And that was the first moment I really noticed the sound in this game. Everything's quiet, you're sitting there, waiting for the sniper to shoot and reload so you can move. And whenever he shoots, you can hear the bullets flying around you, hitting the other things in the way. It is actually anxiety inducing and one of my favorite parts in the game. If there's an enemy on the floor above you, you can hear him running around with your eyes closed and tell exactly where he is without a problem. Many times during this gameplay, I was saved from someone coming from behind me just because of the audio in this game. Can I? The, I don't know if you guys are using headphones, but the audio in this game is really good. Like, I, I can hear people down here. That's crazy. I wish I could say the same for the guns. Sadly, I don't think they used real gun sounds for this game, which, at least for me, felt a bit lacking considering how amazing everything else sounds in this game. But. I can't be too mad about it. And still in the sound department, the music in this game was the first thing that triggered something itchy in me. I knew I heard it before and I was right. I did. People in the chat confirmed that the soundtrack in this game was composed by one Michael Giacchino, who you may not know by name, but maybe some of his other scores, like every Medal of Honor game, the Jurassic World movies, Mission Impossible, the new Spider-Man movies, you know, basic stuff. This one is far from disappointing. It sounds a lot like what I heard in Medal of Honor before, and that's a very welcome thing to have in this game. It helps you get immersed into whatever battle you're in without even noticing it's playing on the background, while you focus on enemy locations and bullets flying around you. Really awesome stuff that I can't believe no one talks about when talking about video games. Video game audio is underrated. Please give the attention it deserves when you play your next game. But not everything in life are strawberries though. Uh, wait, did I type this right? Not everything in life are strawberries. Um, well, okay, uh, the gameplay. It did not age very well at all. If you want me to be extremely honest, I'd tell you that it aged like the milk you forgot in the back of your fridge two years ago and forgot because you kept buying new groceries and putting it in front of it every time you came back from the store. And now that you finally cleaned your fridge, you look at it and remember the fun memories you had about it and how beautiful it looks. But then you decide to open it and give it a big and the putrid smell fills your nostrils as you fall down in pain eyes watering and bringing in extreme pain as you just took a big bite of extremely cold ice cream. 
<sighs> Sorry, I got carried away. It's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. It doesn't feel very good to play, especially because of how the analog sticks worked on the PS2. Some people mentioned that the Xbox version of this game had better controls, which I can't confirm, but I don't think the PS2 was made with first person shooters in mind. At least not in the way they came to be. I was actually trying to figure out what exactly the problem was, and someone even mentioned that Black was especially bad because of it. Aiming has a little bit of lag and the acceleration isn't smooth at all. One second you're slowly turning around and the sensitivity goes up to 100. It's really hard to aim in this game, which kinda kills one of the coolest features in the game. Projectile bullets. Whenever you try to shoot someone, your bullet isn't instantly hitting people the moment you hit the trigger. It takes time for it to reach whatever you're shooting at depending on the distance. So you have to lead your shots if you see someone running or walking far away from you. I was impressed to see this as early in the PS2 era in an FPS. But like I said, not only the controls were making me hate it, but the bullet spread isn't very clear in this game. Your aim is a small white dot in your screen that turns into other colors depending where you're aiming. So for example, if you're looking at explosives, it turns black. If you're looking at a secondary objective, it turns blue. However, the bad side of having such a simplistic crosshair is that you're never sure how much your bullets can spread outside your aim. So sometimes I caught myself holding the trigger on someone just to see the bullets flying everywhere in the map. It's not that big of a deal, but maybe it could have been done a little bit better. And this is the part where I usually go back and tell you what happens in the story of this game. Uh, I honestly don't know. I had to go back and watch all the cutscenes again, because the only one I actually understood during gameplay was the last one. Besides that, I had no idea what was happening or why I was shooting people. Which doesn't necessarily take that much away from the game, but I thought I'd let you know. The entire game is from the perspective of Keller, telling the stories of what he went through finding the seventh wave, and someone who they call Lenox, or Lenox. A hitman who ambushes him but doesn't kill him. Lennox was a former CIA operative who, after faking his own death, became the leader of the 7th wave. And that's who you go after through the entire game. At the end of the game, the interrogator reveals that they already knew about his involvement in the 7th wave. And how in the end of the game, you didn't actually kill him. They arrange a false death for Keller, who is then told to get ready for his next assignment. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for Black 2 to see what happens in the story. This game was a pleasant surprise to play again. While the gameplay didn't age very well, everything else in this game got so much effort put into it that it's impossible not to be impressed by it. I do know that the game is backwards compatible with the Xbox consoles and, at least a few years ago, was part of the Xbox Game Pass lineup. So maybe if you get the opportunity, check it out and see how well it holds up while I'm playing there. For this version of the game, I can only recommend it to you if you're filled by nostalgia for it or if you'd like to see a very awesome tech demo for what the PS2 was really capable of. It is sad that the game never got ported to PCs, as it would be awesome to try this with better controls. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and of course, thank you so much for our new members, Monarch96 and Scout Counterattacks. Thank you so much for helping me do what I love the most and thank you fellow viewer for watching. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.